Fully.
lifted high, be exalted, how above the heavens you are worthy to be praised. Good morning, and once again, it's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for fellowshipping with us today and also for giving us space. Now, I'm blessed today, and I pray that God will bless you all. I'm looking forward to the new week because we'll be starting our turning evangelistic initiative, which is nationwide. Please be part of it. Go to our website and click on the turning link, and you will see all the information. Tonight, we have the launch, which is going to be via Zoom. And then tomorrow, we'll start meeting at various churches in Lambert. Like tomorrow, we'll start at St. Mark's at 9.45. Please make it a date. And as I was preparing for the service today, the scripture God laid on my heart is in Psalm 143, verse 1. It says, Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my plea. Answer me, because... You are faithful and righteous. And my prayer for you this day, as we consider that subject, the disciplines, dimensions, and dynamics of prayer, is that God will hear your prayers. God will listen to your plea, and he will answer you. And so please, use the chat to send a prayer to someone today. And as we rise up, let's participate, let's celebrate, and worship God together. Hallelujah, God is here and he is in the midst of his people. We want his glory to fill this place. We want his presence to move in our midst. Wherever you are watching at home or wherever at work, we want the glory of the, of the Lord to fill the atmosphere. Hallelujah, the glory of the Lord. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord, let it rise. Rise in the praise of our King. Let the praise of our King rise. Among us, let it rise. Let's from the top. Let the glory of the Lord. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise. Let the praise of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory 
glory of the Lord. Let it rise. Rise and among us. The praises are the praises of our King. Let it rise. Rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord. Let the glory of the Lord. Let it rise. Rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord.
chains And every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb And every knee will bow before Every knee will bow before him Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb Every knee will bow before him Every knee will bow before him He's the lion, he's the lamb, he's the king of kings. He's the one who was from the beginning and continues to be even before time began. And he is worthy of it all. He's worthy of all our praise. He's worthy of all the glory. Because you have created all things for your pleasure. You've created us for your pleasure. And that is why no other God is going to take your place. No foreign God will take your place. No foreign God will take Oh, 
church uh, please join me as I lead us in a time of prayer the first prayer point is coming from Psalm 145 verse 18 um, and it reads the Lord is near to all who call on him to all who call on him in truth and the second verse comes from Matthew chapter 6 verse 7 and when you pray do not be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others truly I tell you they have received their reward in full Let's pray that as we approach God in prayer, that our posture will be that of truth and honesty, that we will approach God with a humble heart and sincerity, that when we pray to God, that our focus shall not be to impress man, but to be to give our needs and our petitions to God. So let's pray. Father God, I want to thank you, Father God. I pray that as we um, approach you, Father God, that our posture will be that of truth, Father God, and honesty, that we shall be honest with you, Father God, about what we desire, about what we need. Father God, I pray that you shall allow us to talk with a humble heart, Father God, and sincerity in all we do. In Jesus' name, amen. The second um, prayer point, the first verse I'll read from is Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. And this says, again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything and they ask for it, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. Matthew 6 verse 6 is the second verse and it says but when you pray go into your room close the door and pray to your father who is unseen then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you amen there's a call on us to engage in corporate prayer but also a call for us to engage in individual prayer and none of those two are to be ignored let's pray that in this time of online church that will not only um, not forsake corporate prayer but then in our closets, we will passionately pursue God. In Jesus' name, let's pray. Father God, I pray now, Father God, that as we um, engage in times of prayer with you, Father God, that we shall not forsake corporate prayer in this time, Father God. I pray you shall give us the zeal, Father God, to seek each other out in this time, Father God, to gather, whether it be prayer meetings, whether it be um, on Sundays, Father God, to pray together and to commit ourselves to you, Father God. I pray that in our closets, you shall give us an energy, Father God, Jesus, and a determination, Father God, Jesus, to pray and to pursue you in faith and in all honesty. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, we've just read that corporate prayer. Um, it's something the Bible encourages us to do and instructs us to do. Um, and we know that corporate prayer can be uh, powerful. And one of the reasons I find it powerful is accountability. Um, but in your prayer closet, individually, um, it can get very difficult because there's no one to hold you accountable. Um, we can get tired, we can get disheartened um, and almost unbothered to pray. So let's pray for strength and discipline to continue and to fight through our times of prayer fatigue or when we just feel weak. Father God, I pray that as we pray individually in our prayer closets, Father God, I pray that you be with us, Father God, give us strength. Father God, give us energy, Father God, give us a zeal to commit ourselves to you, Father God, Jesus. Allow us not to forsake our individual prayers, Father God, Jesus, but allow us to move powerfully 
Father God, when we're praying individually, allow our posture to be that, Father God, Jesus, or passion, Father God, to, to shout to you, Father God, to scream out to you, Father God, when we need you and that we want you present. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, the next prayer point comes from Jeremiah 20, verse 9, um, and it says, But if I say, I will not mention his word or speak anymore in his name, his word is in my heart like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones. I am wary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. Let's pray that um, as we're praying and giving ourselves to God, that as Jeremiah said, it will be like a fire in our bones. That will be something that we cannot contain. Um, the praise of God will be a fire that we cannot contain. And the testimony of God in our lives will be like a fire that we cannot contain. Um, let's pray now. Father God, I pray that Father God, your word, Father God, and your spirit, Father God, and, and just the, 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 the decision to pray will be that fire in our bones, Father God. I pray that we will not be able to hold it in, but instead in power and in might we shall move powerfully, Father God, to speak, that nothing shall hold us back, nothing shall close our mouths and hold our tongues, Father God, as we commit ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Um, and lastly, I think let's just take this time to um, commit our own personal request to God those things that we are praying for secretly um, and let's commit them to God and pray that God will hear us and God will answer us in Jesus' name. Father God, I pray for um, all of those things, Father God, which we are asking for, Father God, personally, Father God, in our lives. Those individual moments of breakthrough, Father God, that we require and we need from you. Father God, I pray that you shall provide our needs, Father God, and at, at the end of the day, we shall come back, Father God, with a time um, of testimony to thank you and to praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If God has said it, it will come to pass. Do not go kicking any door in because that will be premature and ungodly. This will be the red hot lava of self ambition seeking expression through the fault lines and fissures of ungodly character of self-will and will bring grievous ruin however long it takes. Situations and circumstances may seem to present themselves as God sent. Men and women may encourage you with scripture and prophecy. You can even justify your actions as self-defense or self-preservation and what others have done and are doing. The end never justifies the means. Evil, filth, and the ungodly will always remain evil, filth, and ungodly. Make no mistake about it. Do not force the dots to join. Remember Jeroboam, who because of selfish ambition set up an alternative place of worship and ended up with an unenviable accolade of making Israel to sin. This is what 1 Kings 16-24 says, For he walked in all the ways of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, and in the sin by which he had made Israel sin, provoking the Lord God of Israel to anger with their idols. Again I say, one green light is not enough to proceed. No, not even two. Wait for the full pack of three. Take another look at guidance. Please kindly allow me to share with you from Gregory Asimakopoulos, write-up on the book, Take Another Look at Guidance by Bob Mumford. Bob Mumford compares discovering God's will with a sea captain's docking procedure. A certain harbor in Italy can be reached only by sailing up a narrow channel between dangerous rocks and shoals. Over the years, many ships have been wrecked and navigation is hazardous. To guide a ship safely into port, three lights have been mounted on three huge poles in the harbor. When the three lights are perfectly lined up and seen as one, the ship can safely proceed up the narrow channel. If the pilot sees two or three lights, he knows he is off course and in danger. God has also provided three beacons to guide us. The same rules of navigation apply. The three lights must be lined up before it is safe for us to proceed. The three harbor lights of guidance are 1. The Word of God, which is objective standard. Two, the Holy Spirit, which is subjective witness. And three, circumstances, which is divine providence. Together, they assure us that the directions we've received are from God and will lead us safely along His way.
Let truth and fear of God triumph over opportunity and ambition. Allow truth and the fear of God to always triumph over personal ambition. Your God promised time will come as it did for David. As they say in the pidgin language, the thing for you never pass. Then like in David, as he eventually became, you will earn the accolade of being a man after God's own heart. Oh, hallelujah. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Thank you all for joining us online while the All Nation Center is being refurbished. This weekend is a national event for us all as we are currently in the period of national mourning for Queen Elizabeth II which will continue until the day of her state funeral on Monday the 19th of September. Preparation for Mission England daily outreach activities based at St Mark's Church, the Oval and also in our ANC cell areas is taking place. Do consider taking some time off work and invest in sharing the gospel at this challenging time in our nation. God loves you. We want to share out God's love to everybody out there. These are my sisters and my brothers, as you can see. Mission intentional for the kingdom of God. The video images that you see are the recent outreach where Jesus Christ was preached on the streets of South London and numerous people made the decision to follow Jesus Christ or to hear more and follow up is now ensuing. We hope that many will also come and join in for the next outreach. We don't want to be selfish, we want to share out God's love to everybody out there. Anyone want to join us? And let's not forget over the next few days as we engage with people to reassure all and be a beacon of hope and light to those who are caught up in grief. Last week was Missionary Sunday. Thank you for your giving and please continue to give generously, particularly to the special appeal for support needed by the Apostolic Church in Pakistan. Full details on this are available in the mission report for September on the ANC missions page. The Grace Course has commenced in September. We need to disciple those coming through our outreach program. On Thursday, we have teaching meetings on the history and beliefs of the Apostolic Church. And please remember, as Pastor Saki mentioned last week, that we continue to pray and fast on the days of our birth. If you do not receive ANC messages via these methods and you have not opted out, then please contact the church office during working hours to get this rectified. With your assistance, we'll be able to resolve this for you. We're here to serve you so that we can all better serve the Lord, his people and our communities. The All Nations Centre is inviting all members to participate in the Healthy Church Initiative. The aim is to make significant and small changes to our eating and physical health so that we are fit for the Master's purpose. The Healthy Church Initiative is a six-week transformational program especially designed for the Black African Caribbean Church community. The practical sessions will be delivered by a team of registered health professional advisors and sessions will be online. Examples of things that would be covered are practical ways to recognize hidden sugars in our diet and decrease overall sugar intake, recognizing and reducing fat and salt whilst maintaining our cultural eating, portion control, balancing our plates and portions to promote good health and so much more. So let me encourage you to register today and move towards being fit for the master's purpose. Please register your interest on Eventbrite to participate. Praise the Lord once again. I just want to welcome everyone joining us online, worshipping with us. 
I've been blessed so far by the worship today, and I hope you've been blessed as well. I just want to welcome you uh, once again, and I thank God for making it possible for you to join us today. Uh, especially for those who are joining us for the first time, I just want to welcome you. I would really appreciate it if you indicate in the chat where you're joining us from, and also on the chat you would see uh, a, a link to our contact form. We would really appreciate it if you can complete that contact form. We just want to see how we can reach out to you and be of help to you. I would also like to encourage each and every one of us to visit the website, the All Nation Center website. It's a new website and it's full of materials that will bless you, that will bless me, so that we'll grow in this uh, theme we've been considering. We've got a lot of materials there, uh, which I believe will be a blessing to each and every one of us. I also want to say that it's that time uh, that we've been waiting for to bless God with whatever he has blessed us with. And on the screen, you would see uh, information about how to give. And as the word of God says, God loves a cheerful giver. I want to encourage us as we move into this next session of giving our offering and our tithes. Please, the information is on the screen. I would encourage all of us to give cheerfully. God bless you. Let's go. Hallelujah. Awesome. He's wonderful. He's worthy to be praised. I want to give him all the praise that he is worthy of. Awesome God, awesome God, mighty God, mighty God, awesome God, awesome God, mighty God, mighty God. Oh, I give you praise, I give you praise. Awesome God, awesome God, I give you praise, I give you praise. Mighty God, come on, come on, come on.
are high and lifted up. You are exalted. You are worthy of all the praise. Amen. 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 You know, the Bible says that goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And that is what I've experienced in the hands of God. He has been faithful to me. I'm going to do the song, The Goodness of God. And I pray it blesses you. Because every day I sing of the goodness of God. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness.
Praise the Lord. I thank God for this opportunity to be able to join you in the All Nations Assembly in Kennington via this technology. And I want to bless the name of the Lord for the life of our Apostle Abraham Saki and all the ministers and all the members in this assembly. We really miss you. It's taken quite a long time since we saw each other. But we are trusting God that now that COVID is ebbing way down, we will have the opportunity to meet in person. But I thank God for this opportunity to be able to join you in today's service. And my heart was really gladdened when Apostle Saki made me aware that you are treating a series on the dynamics of prayer. So I accepted with gladness when he asked me if I could contribute to this. Prayer is so vital to our Christian work and our Christian health. It's something that I don't know whether we can ever stop learning about it. Because it, it, it's the difference between what we receive as promises and what we can really experience tangibly in our lives. And it's my prayer that God will use me to contribute something that will affect our lives. Please bother your head with me and let's pray. We thank you, Father. We bless your name for life. We give you all the glory for giving us this opportunity. We thank you that by your word you made all things and there is nothing you did without your word. And we know it's going to take this same word for you to effect your will in our lives, Lord. Open our eyes this day that we might behold wondrous things out of thy word. Touch all my brethren, O God. Touch us all and let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, I want to share with us certain aspects of prayer out of the answer Jesus gave when his disciples asked him to teach them how to pray. So I'll be taking most of what I'll be saying from Luke the chapter 11. Luke chapter 11, and I'm reading from the verse 1. It says, and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. This makes it clear to us that prayer can be taught. Prayer can be taught. It also makes it clear to us that we can grow in prayer. It also makes it clear to us that prayer is in levels. And my desire is that God will teach all of us how to pray effectively. And when we say effective prayer, I mean prayer that achieves results. Prayer that brings home the request. And we are going to learn that prayer is not just about getting something from God, but prayer is more than that. But I just want us to get a little into what was happening in this place. Jesus, the son of God, becoming man to save us, came on this earth, grew up and started his ministry and got some disciples with him. And they realized one thing about him. They realized that his prayer life was different. And this is a real challenge. If Jesus had to pray to be that successful, no one can dodge prayer if you want to be successful. It's also amazing that out of the many things Jesus did, we don't see recorded that his disciples asked him to teach them how to preach. We, we don't find it in the written word. We don't find Jesus ask, uh, his disciples asking him to teach them how to raise the dead, to teach them how to heal the sick. But we see them asking the Lord teach us to pray. 
And this was just after they had watched him pray. They realized that no, all the results this man is achieving in life stems from his prayer life. Prayer is the engine room from where all other things flow. And I pray that God will help us to be able to learn how to pray and grow in our prayer lives. Lord, teach us to pray. And even as I say it now, I say it as a prayer that Lord, teach us to pray. You see, this disciple, it wasn't all the disciples who asked. One particular disciple said, Lord, teach us. He didn't say, Lord, teach me. He realized that they all needed to grow in prayer. They all needed to be more effective in prayer. So he didn't say, Lord, teach me. He said, Lord, teach us. Because he realized the difference between how Jesus prayed and the results he received and how they prayed and the results they received. This prayer also comes out of some level of, of humility. He was humble enough to say, that, Lord, I, I don't think we are where we should be in our prayer lives and I don't know what you are saying. This disciple had a hunger. Are we hungry for God? Are we hungry to learn? Are we hungry to learn how to pray? Even before I come to what I'm asking, if you are not hungry enough, you can't get anywhere with what we are doing today. This disciple was hungry and he said, Lord, teach us, not just me, teach us. We need this. Teach us how to pray. And Jesus began by saying, when you pray. Praise God. Jesus started by saying, when you pray. So I've titled this first part of this discourse, God is always ready. God is always ready. God is always ready. You see, God didn't tell them that no, if you want to pray, then this is the best time to pray. No. God didn't say that the best time to pray is midnight. God didn't say the best time to pray. No, he, he didn't choose for them a time and he didn't choose for them an occasion. He left it in their hands that when you pray, when you decide to pray, in essence, God is saying, I am ever ready. Choose the time. Praise God. And this is exciting because if God had special times, then we'll have to discern those special times. But God is always ready. Hallelujah. So God is giving us the opportunity. When? You can decide when to pray. You can decide and you can choose. And you can choose the occasion. You can choose when you want that thing to happen. You can choose when you believe you need God. And you see, prayerlessness stems out of pride that I can do it. I can do it. I see Isaac getting a wife and they not having any children and I don't read about Isaac praying about that until 20 years and when he prayed God came through choose when you want to pray choose when you want to see the hand of God revealed in your life. Praise God. So one thing I learned there about the dynamics of prayer is that when we pray, it's in our hands because God is always ready. Then we, we read in that discourse that God is saying that when we pray, we should say our Father. God is asking us to approach him as children and that we should know that he is our father. You know, 
The father's position is a position of responsibility. So God wants us to know when we come to prayer that he is responsible. Praise God. He's a responsible father and he will take care of his own. So this is the heart with which we should approach prayer. He is our father. It is his responsibility to supply our needs. And he's more than ready to do that. But he leaves it in our hands. We decide when to pray. He's not just an ordinary father. He is God. He's a heavenly father. And he makes it clear to us. If you read down, if you go down in those verses... He says that if your earthly fathers who are evil, they know how to give good things to their children, how much more your heavenly father? God is saying here that he will do more. Oh, I want someone to start getting excited in his heart and spirit that God says he will do more. Praise God. He's about a better father than the fathers we have. God says he will do more. Why? He's a better father than the fathers we have in this land. And if you, you, you look at yourself and what you desire to do for your children, God says he will do better than that. Praise God. One thing I also like about this is that he is not an earthly father. He's a heavenly father. And God has unlimited resources. Let me put it in, in simple words. God is never broke. Our earthly fathers can get broke. There are things we can ask our earthly fathers that they will not be able to provide. But God is never broke. Praise God. And one thing I want you to know when you are approaching God is in prayer is that he has given you the greatest gift already. So what you are asking is smaller than what he has already done. And if he has done what is greater, he will do this also. The Apostle Paul wanted us to appreciate this. So he said in Romans the chapter 8, the verse 32. It says, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How? How shall he not with him also freely, praise God, give us, he didn't say some things, but he said all things. I think I will want to read that again. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? How shall he not? God has given us his greatest gift in his son Jesus Christ. Whom he brought into this world to die for us. So that we can become the children of God. We can become part of the common wealth of Israel. So that we can inherit the promises. So God's blessings for our lives are available. That's another thing I want you to recognize. In talking about the dynamics of prayer. It's, it's not now that God is going to release the answer, but the answers are available. And in trying to talk about this, I want to use the story of the woman with the issue of blood. The woman with the issue of blood in the Bible who had bled for 12 good years. And the Bible says that she had spent all her money on physicians and there was no improvement. Let me read this. Mark chapter 5 from the verse 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus. And I want you to know that the Bible is true. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. It was out of what she had. 
that she said something. She said within herself that if I can only touch the hem of his garment, the edge of his clothes, I know I will be made whole. And this is what faith does. Faith connects to the source of supply. So this woman got up and went through the crowd and touched the hem of his garment and without permission. And this is what I want you to know, that your blessing is available. Your blessing is available. Your blessing is available. Without permission from Jesus, this woman connected by touching his clothes and she got healed immediately. And listen, just by touching her clothes, Jesus said, who touched me? And the disciples wondered, they said, hey, Jesus, people are thronging you, people are pushing you. Why are you talking about a touch? When people are pressing you, Jesus said, I'm not talking about pressing, I'm talking about a touch. And Jesus said, because virtue is gone out of me. When we really pray, virtue comes to us. When we really touch the throne of God, something comes down from the throne of God. And prayer must connect us to the source. And that is what we are talking about. We must learn how to connect to the source. Some people think that the highest form of prayer is just praying in tongues. So when they come to pray and then let's pray and then they are just praying in tongues, praying in tongues and sometimes they are so absent-minded and they think that is all. No. Some people think that praying, I mean the highest form of prayer is to come and be making some sounds that they call groaning in the spirit. Anytime I see that I wonder, no, 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 no. Those sounds are no groanings in the spirit. When it gets to actual groaning in the spirit, you can't even make those sounds. That's a very high level of prayer. So what we see these days, one stands here, one stands there, and it's like they are, they are I don't know how to say it, but they are responding to each other. And they say it's groaning in prayer. It's not. You are making sounds, you are making noise. Prayer must connect you to the source. And when you are connected, virtue will flow. You don't need to ask for permission for electricity to flow through your body. Just connect to the source and power will come because it's from a higher level to a lower level. In prayer, we must connect. So some people think that, I mean, serious prayer is serious body activity. It is not. The important how you connect. How you connect to the source. How you connect to God. How you link your faith. Is what is important. And this woman connected to the source. And virtue came out. Without permission. And Jesus said, someone has touched me. And she owned up. And Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. When you pray. What we are saying today is that God is ready. God is ready. And I want you to know that God has done enough to prove that he's ready for you. God has done enough to prove that he's ready for you. And I'm, I'm, talk, I'm not talking about anyone else's life. I'm talking about your own life. God has done enough. Sometimes we look at what we are expecting God to do and we lose sight of what he has already done. So I want to take you to Psalm 81, the verse 10. He says, I am. Praise God. I am. When we come to prayer, we should know that he is. He says, I am the Lord 
thy God. He is. He is the only underived. He is the only Lord of all. He is the one whose word cancels every other word. Men can choose to say certain things about your life, but the word of God will cancel it. Praise God. I am the Lord thy God. And he says, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt? See, I like this scripture because these words were spoken in the days of Asaph. And which means it was in the days of David. And David and Asaph, they were not there when God delivered Israel from Egypt. But God is telling them in their day that I am the Lord who brought you. He didn't even say your fathers. He said, who brought you out of the land of Egypt? In essence, God is saying that when I was bringing your fathers out of Egypt, I had you in mind. What I did for your fathers, I did it for you. Your life didn't really begin when you were born. Your life began before you were born. You are a continuation of something God started long ago. And God will bring it to a perfect end for the glorification of of his name and his name alone. You look into your own life, it will be clear to you that God has done many things. The fact that you are alive today is a testimony of the power of God. Because if your enemies were more powerful than your God, you should have been buried a long time ago. And if you cannot count at all, you can count one particular incident in your life that you know God came through for you. God did all that for a reason. He says, I am the Lord which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. God is saying that I have done great things because that day was a glorious day. It was a day when the enemy was silenced. It was a day when what the enemy said was not possible. The enemy ate back his own words. The Pharaoh who said, who is that God that I should obey him? Now said, Moses, go, go, all of you. And then he said, and go, bless me also. Praise God. Now Pharaoh bowed to acknowledge the God of Israel. May all the idols and enemies and those who stand against you, may they bow to the God you serve and God will make sure it happens. If we learn the dynamics of prayer and apply them faithfully. I am the Lord which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So he told them about what he did in their father's time and now listen to what he says. He says, open your mouth why? And I will feel it. God is throwing a challenge. He's not just saying, I am ready for you anytime. But he's saying that I am ready to meet every level of demand. In essence, God is asking you, how can you take? How much can you take? How much can you take is what God is asking. Open your mouth of faith wide and I, God, will feel it. Because my supply is inexhaustible. We must come to prayer with this faith. We must come to prayer with this attitude that God is ready. And my question is, are you? Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's stop pushing prayer to the background. One song tells us that what needless pain we bear. We bear a lot of pain needlessly because those pains 
could have been solved by prayer. All we need is to carry them to God. So let me round it up again and say that we need to grow in our prayer lives. And prayer is a journey and is a walk with God. And we should all be humble to know that we don't know enough and always have this cry on our hearts to God the Lord Teach me to pray. Lord, I want to pray better. Lord, I want to be more effective. Have that desire and, and go on that journey with the Spirit of God. And have that humility of wanting to learn. God has no mood swings. He is ever ready for us. Even as you listen to me now, I want you to know that God is ready for you. God is ready to hear your cry in prayer. So what is it? What is it? That you haven't spoken to God about. And what is it that you haven't yet given to God? One of the problems we have in prayer is that we say, Lord, I give this to you, but we are still holding it. You are holding it, and that's why you are still feeling the weight. He says, cast your cares upon me because I care for you. So you give it to him. And don't feel the weight anymore. Let him deal with it. But sometimes we still hold it. And then we become the obstacle to God because he wants to take it to deal with it but you're still holding it and you've prayed about it but you haven't given it. Cast it to him and say, Lord, I give it to you. I trust you. Deal with this for me. You can see that in the life of Hannah as she prayed for a man child She'll go in sorrow and come in sorrow. Which means she took her problem to God, to the temple, and came back with her problem. But we realize that one day it was different. She went to the temple and left the problem there. She came back without sorrow. Though she wasn't yet pregnant. And that was when she really offloaded her request to God. When you pray, it means God had been ready all along, but Hannah always took the problem and brought it back home. Today, as you listen to me, I want you to offload some of the weight off your shoulders. This life has many twists and turns. We all need God. Let's come to him now. And let me say this. The best way to learn how to pray is to pray. So I just want you to close your eyes with me wherever you are. Take the position that is best for you. You can choose to stand, you can choose to kneel, you can choose to sit. And I want you to bring your mind to this God who says, I am Father. And begin to call him Father. And he says, I'm ready. And he wants you to know that he's been here all along. What do you want to tell him? He says, cast your curse upon me. Because I care for you. Offload that problem this moment. Give it to God. Give it to God. And see what God will do. And what God can do. Begin to talk to God now. Begin to bring your own life to him. Begin to bring that issue that is eating you up to him. 
If you are not able to offload it, just tell him, Lord, teach me how to offload this problem to you and how to trust you. Give it to him and let it go. For he cares for you. He has given you his greatest gift. Why won't he add the rest? Father, I thank you. I thank you that you are ever ready for us. And I know that you are listening to us even now and as we call upon you. We come to you as your children in need. And we pray this day that Lord you will fill the holes in our lives Lord. We pray that your presence will be our comfort oh God. And we pray that you will teach us to pray. Bring us on this journey for that glory and our praise. Thank you, Father, this day for this opportunity. I pray that if there is anyone here, Lord, who does not know you, and his heart is crying, that Lord, save me from my sins. Lord, hear and save. If there is anyone, Lord, facing some imminent danger, Lord, I pray. You are all we have. You are all we know. Thankfully, you are the only true God there is. Out of mercy, touch your own. Deliver your own, Lord. Heal your own, Lord. And let your name alone be praised. I give you the glory, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. My, 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 wonderful. How, how, what a beautiful thing it is to listen to God's word proclaimed with clarity, with authority and with power. We want to say, I'm sure you want me, want to join me in saying a big thank you to Apostle Aaron Amina, who is the president of the Apostolic Church, Ghana, for his ministration. Thank God for his life. And for his ministry, I want to say this to us, that one of the things that I try to do is to say, okay, let me take one point that I'm going to apply in this coming week. Why don't you do that? If you can master more than one or two or three points, do so and say, this week, I'm going to apply this in my life. I'm going to see it outworked so that the word will not only take root, but it will be manifested in terms of its impact and influence on my life. And I want to pray that as you go through the week, that will be your experience. And so can I invite you to stand with me? Uh, all of us, wherever we are, if you're in a family group in a home, just stand together, shoulder to shoulder. If you want to join hands, join hands. And we'll make our declaration and then we'll share the doxology together. So the declaration, let's read together. And let's declare together. The presence of God will be with me. And mine as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And I will drink from the rivers of the delights of my God. I will know the real contentment of the Lord in all my ways and in all its ramifications. I am looking forward to be back to in-person service stronger and fitter for the master's use and for his glory. Let's come and share the doxology together wonderful words now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to god our savior who alone is wise be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forevermore amen I want to say, may the shalom of God be with you and yours in the week ahead. God bless you. Thank you for listening to God's Word. We are the Apostolic Church All Nation Centre in Kennington, London. 
find us at Tyus Terrace, Kennington, London, SE11 5LY. Our telephone number is 0207 820 On the web, we are at www.apostolic-anc.org. All Nation Centre, reaching out to you in practical and caring ways.